Happy Friday, friends. I'm Melissa Corkum at the Facebook group Essentially Connected. And if you're watching the replay on YouTube, I would love for you to join our conversation over there. We have a lot of great parents, a lot of great tips and advice, a lot of great community. I know sometimes if you have a child with challenging behaviors or ADHD, it can really feel isolating and like you might be crazy. And let me assure you that you're not. So please uh, hop on Facebook or and look for the group Essentially Connected or uh, look for the link in the description at the video. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about lying. So when I ask parents what their biggest behavior challenges are, lying almost always comes up. And I would say it's one of the top challenging behaviors that folks come to me about. So if your child has lied to you in the memorable past, uh, maybe in the last week, go ahead and give a little thumbs up or a little angry face uh, reaction to the video uh, that will just help reinforce to folks that this is something that we're all dealing with. No one's alone on this journey, right? Okay, so first of all, let's talk a little bit about why lying comes up so much. There's so many other things that our kids do. So why lying? What is it about lying that really gets under our skin? So whenever I help families tackle a challenging behavior, that's one of the first things we talk about, right? Like what's going on with this behavior in ourselves, with you as the parent? And that can be a really great exercise to just help put the behavior in perspective. So, you know, at its core, right? Lying is just words. Now, I know they're lying words, so they mean a whole lot more and words have meaning and I get all of that. But they're words, right? Do you remember that old phrase, you know, when you were growing up, um, sticks and stones can break my bones, but words can never hurt me, right? Um, obviously, that's not true because when kids use words that lie, there's something in us, right, that prickles, that gets angry, that gets hurt. So, you know, there's a good reason for that. I'm not saying that if you feel that way, you shouldn't because these are just words, but I think it's really important to put this all in perspective. Lying's a big deal to us because it breaks trust. It breaks relationship. That's not the kind of relationship that we were supposed to be in. It's not the way that we were built, right? We were built to be in relationship that was a two-way street where we could trust each other. And so lying undermines that, not just when our kids lie to us, right? But when anyone lies to us. So this isn't just about our kids. It's about lots of different things, but we're responsible for our kids. And so when our kids lie, we feel all this extra responsibility. It's a little bit different, right? Than if a friend lies to you or a coworker lies to you or, you know, something else like that. A lot of times we just cut those people out of our lives, but we can't do that with our kids, right? So lying at its core really um, threatens our sense of felt safety in a relationship. So all of a sudden, these simple words, right, put us into a stage of fight, flight, or freeze, probably triggers ourselves. Um, lying may also be something that has a history in your past. Maybe you were lied to or betrayed in your past, and lying is the thing that triggers all of those emotions and feels from that experience. Um, maybe you were taught growing up that lying was absolutely not okay and that really embedded itself in your psyche it's obviously not but maybe there were really harsh consequences for lying when you were a kid maybe there was a lot of shame in lying you know we have all these emotions wrapped up in situations when we were involved in a lie either the one telling the lie or the one being on the receiving end of the lie um there's also this overarching societal value, especially in America, about truth, right? We may not see the truth often, right? I, I feel like, you know, in advertising all these things, like the truth isn't really valued, but we do have this idea in society that truth matters, um, objectiveness matters, evidence matters, right? We um, have a justice system that is largely revolves around having evidence to prove truth, to prove reality, that's a really big deal in our culture. 
And I say that because not all cultures value truth in the same way that our culture does. So that brings me to some reasons that kids might be lying, um, that your kids might be lying. And the first one is this idea of culture. In some other cultures, sometimes lying um, is considered kind of being like sly or, or smart, or you can outsmart someone by manipulating or lying. Um, and so if your child was adopted and comes from a culture where lying wasn't held, um, as a bad thing, it was maybe a street smart thing. Or if, you know, people told little white lies all the time for survival and it was just generally accepted, then your child might not have the same paradigm about lying that you do, uh, might not value that the same way. Um, other reasons why kids lie are um, fear, right? They're afraid that something bad's gonna happen if the truth is known. They're afraid that if the truth gets out, you know, that maybe the worst thing that's ever happened to them will happen to them again. They might just be afraid of being in trouble, right? Like it's really hard to tell the truth if you know that what you've done is wrong. Um, our children have a very, um, their brain goes very quickly to fight, flight and freeze. And so lying can be a part of that, right? We could call it fight, flight, freeze, fib, or I also talk about fold, which is a whole different video, but it's one of those stress and fear responses. Um, it's self-protective. It may have been something that your child learned as a survival mechanism before he came to you or just generally in life. Um, you know, maybe there have been punishments that he doesn't like for doing something he doesn't want to do. Not that that's wrong, but you know, we have this innate uh, thing in our brains that says like, don't go back to that place where that bad thing happened, right? And our brain um, or your child's brain may have been so impulsive and done another bad thing anyway, but then now they're trying to cover up by lying. Um, lying also helps is a way to control your environment. And it's not a super healthy way to gain control, but it is a way to gain control. So kids who are feeling super afraid or not safe for whatever reason, and it doesn't mean that they're not safe in your care, but you know, they just might be feeling triggered by something may use lying to control their environment. Um, lying is also a way to get attention, right? It is one way for you to snap to action right away. We hardly ever ignore a lie when we know that we're being told a lie, right? We give it attention right away. We give it, um, usually because we're triggered by it, we give it a lot of drama and attention. And some kids love that. Like they get an adrenaline rush off of that. Um, some kids like any kind of attention, positive or negative, right? And so lying becomes almost like an entertaining game because they know they can elicit a certain response from you with a lie. So, um, you know, lying can be, again, a fight, flight, and freeze, fear, control response. Um, it can be something to get attention. It can also be confabulation. So confabulation is the idea of making up stories to fill gaps in memory. It doesn't feel safe to not remember something that someone may be asking you to recall. And so rather than saying we don't remember, we might confabulate a story. Um, memory is also a really weird thing. It's not as cut and dry as sometimes we think it is. And so sometimes maybe our brain has confabulated for us to fill a gap in memory just because it doesn't like having empty spaces. Um, sometimes confabulation is called honest lying because literally the person who's telling the lie believes it because their brain has inserted a memory to fill a gap where there wasn't a legit memory and now it's logged in as a type of memory and your brain might not know the difference. Um, there have been cases, you know, in the justice system where folks have been falsely imprisoned because of 
confabulation. Maybe they got really stressed and someone convinced them maybe that they did something that they didn't do. And so they actually go to court and confess. And then, you know, it turns out that that person really didn't commit the crime, even though they confessed to it. They, and they were led to believe that they really did it. And at some point in time, their memory told them that that's what happened. So that's a really interesting thing to explore as well. Um, another thing that is common with kids, um, if they've come to you through foster adopted placements or if they've just had a really uh, stressful existence in their little lives, right? Our, our world has a lot of stress. Um, they may be coping with that stress by using their imagination and maybe creating a fantasy world in their head. And so they may have blurred their line between reality and fantasy if they've lived in their fantasy world for too long or used that as a coping mechanism too many times. And so they're reality and the reality that we perceive are actually different. And so they're telling you stories, ideas, memories from their reality or their fantasy world that they've created. And it's not the actual reality that's happening in the world you and I see. Um, another reason for lying is some kids with ADHD are adrenaline junkies uh, or um, dopamine junkies, right? They're looking for something fun and exciting and they don't like to be bored. And sometimes lying can create that fun and excitement that they're looking for. Um, that a little bit goes back to like that lying game, like lying for attention, right? And then the last reason why kids lie is they don't have the impulse control or the executive functioning to stop themselves. So kids with ADHD really, really struggle with executive functioning, which is like our ability to um, plan things, understand a lot of cognitive reasoning happens under the umbrella of executive functioning. And so think about how that applies um, when a child's lying. They're not connecting all the dots. They are not able to connect their words now and the impact that that's going to have in the future or the impact that that's going to have on you. Um, they might not be remembering the consequences because they're so impulsive. Their working memory may be impaired. And so even, um, you know, holding the thought of consequences um, while lying might not be something their brain can actually handle. Um, you know, executive functioning impacts our ability to know like abstract things from concrete things. Um, lies in some ways are a little abstract and their consequences. I talked a little bit about that. Um, kids may not understand how they even got to where they are in the first place to even have to tell the lie, or they might not be able to follow their lie. So one lie begets another lie, begets another lie. Um, they may not understand that it's lying that got them in trouble the last time they got in trouble for lying. There might be a disconnect between the uh, punishment and the behavior. Um, and they may not have the reasoning and executive functioning to come up with a better solution. And so their first instinct is to tell a lie because of that protective mechanism we talked about earlier. So there's so many reasons why kids lie. And it's not because your child's a bad kid or he's going to end up in jail or any of these things that are kind of fear-based for ourselves. Okay, so we've talked a little bit about uh, the reasons why kids lie, but that doesn't really help us a whole lot, right, unless we know what to do about it. So here are some tips that I often tell families. The first thing is we want to set our kids up so that for success. And so try not to put them in situations where they would be tempted to lie. So that means, you know, as much as possible, not asking them questions that would probably precipitate a lie. So, you know, did you steal the last cookie? Um, anything kind of like that comes off as accusatory is going to immediately flip our kids to fight, flight, or freeze. They're going to flip their lids. Um, that's basically asking for a lie. It's not really setting them up for success. Um, you know, if we're really sure that our child has done something that needs some kind of restitution, um, you know, say 
you got a report from a teacher that he hit Johnny at school, um, what you probably don't want to do is say, did you, you know, did you hit Johnny at school or, or why did you hit Johnny at school? Because you're probably not going to get the truth. Um, but you can say, hey, let's sit down and write Johnny an apology letter, right? Your kid's going to know what that's about. And he may even be tempted to lie in that moment and say like, apology letter, what did I, you know, what, why do I have to write an apology letter? I didn't do anything or I didn't hit Johnny at school, you know, and he may even, um, confess in that way when you're like, hmm, I didn't even say anything about hitting. So don't ask if you think that your child will right, lie, right. do everything that you can to just say what the next steps are. Um, you know, if it's a mess that your child made you can say, Hey, you know, Sammy, let's clean up the Lego mess. I didn't make the Lego mess. Okay. Well, I didn't say you did, but let's clean it up together. It needs to get cleaned up. Um, if you do have to ask a question, um, be prepared to believe the answer. Even if you don't believe it inside, make your words sound like you believe it, or, um, just use a simple phrase like thanks for sharing. That doesn't necessarily mean that you agree, but you also don't want to get into an argument or a control battle over a lie because at the end of the day, you can't really win that. Um, a lot of times I found it helpful to say something like, tell me the story of what happened at school today, right? And so you'll get a lot of details that aren't what you're looking for, but you may get, uh, you know, what you're looking for. And I, a lot of times will say like, what happened before that? What happened after that? Kind of ask some probing questions, but as in a non-accusatory way as possible. The other thing, um, there's a book out called Nurture Shock, um, that talked a lot about kids and psychology. And there was a whole chapter about lying in that book. And a lot of that research said that even the simple, um, act of saying to our kids like, Hey, let's talk about school today. Will you promise to tell me the real story or the truth? If your child understands the concept of the truth, will you promise to tell me what really happened? And they'll say, Oh yeah, of course. So even just, you know, letting them know how important the truth is to you before you come into a situation where they're going to recount their memories can help, um, deter them from lying. Brian Post has a really great video about lying where he talks about ignoring the lie, but not ignoring the child, right? A lot of our kids, especially if they're lying because of fight, flight, or freeze, um, are feeling unsafe. Their lying is telling you that they're feeling a little insecure about something, maybe your relationship, maybe um, if, it, if your child is foster adopted, their placement, their permanency, all of these things. So he, he says that if a child tells you a lie, to look them in the eye and say, everything's going to be okay. And if your child may be concerned about permanency. So if your child came to your family through adoption and foster care, you may want to add something like you're not going anywhere. Um, you may want to say something like, I, I love being your mom, or I love being your dad, or, um, everything's going to be okay. You know, I love you no matter what, do you understand? And then walk away. So you're, you're telling your child that you see them and that they're safe, but you're ignoring the lie for now. Then at another time when your child is doing something that shows that he's pretty regulated, he might be playing with toys or reading a book or, you know, just hanging out. Um, then you can do the second part of this strategy, which is to look your child in the eye and say, you know, Johnny, when you tell me a lie, it really hurts me. It really hurts mommy. It really hurts daddy. Um, it kind of scares me. And I just need you to know that you can trust me and everything's going to be okay. Do you understand? So you're letting your child know that there was a lie involved. You're not getting an argument about it. You're not correcting it. Our kids know that lying is wrong, especially when they look back, right? So any time that we're going to trigger their shame core, they're going to automatically deny it. So this uh, strategy by Brian Post is really brilliant, right? Because it's re it's it's coming into the back door. It's addressing the the bigger need behind the lying, which is to reassure our kids that everything's going to be okay, that we love them, that they're safe. Um, but that second part kind of also helps them know the impact of their lying 
without having to really accuse them um, and sandwiches that with another statement of you're going to be okay. Um, I'm here for you. I love you. Those types of things. So those are my best tips for lying. If you have something or a tip that you're using in your house, that's been really helpful. Um, we would love to hear it. You know, lying is one of those big scary things for us, but it's also a big scary thing for our kids. The less shame that we can pull in around it, the better we'll be. Um, at the end of the day, remember we can't control our kids and what comes out of their mouth, but we can control ourselves. So if lying is something that is really triggering for you and you're having trouble um, responding to in a way that, you know, ignores the lie and doesn't ignore the child, uh, then I would encourage you to, you know, kind of work through that with someone. Um, you know, I'd be happy to schedule a quick call with you or, you know, contact your mental health provider or whatever, because um, we don't want our kids' behavior to have that much power over us, right? That's scary for us. So we want to do everything we can to kind of take some of the power out of that behavior so that we can respond to it in a way that's going to set everyone up for success and have everyone walking away feeling safe and successful. So that wraps it up for lying this week. Thanks so much for watching. If you're watching the replay, go ahead and drop a replay into the comments um, just so I know that you were here. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. I'm here for you.